Okay, so what these notes are is it's going to help us figure out the third way that you can test hypothesis and find confidence intervals. We know how to do it based on um, summary statistics. We know how to do it based on data lists where we plug into the calculator. The third way to find it is versus is computer printouts. And computer printouts are always going to look a little different, but I'm, um, these examples hopefully will help you see what you need to pick out. Okay, so <clears throat> this right here tells us that we're doing a one sample T. And this right here tells you that your hoe is that the mu is 25 and the ha is that the mu is not 25. So that lets you know that it's a two-tailed test. Okay. Um, it tells you what they're measuring. They're measuring plate weight. The N is 20, so that means because it's a one sample, our degrees of freedom is 19. All right. Um, this is the mean of the sample. Now, this is the standard deviation of the sample. And this right here. It, so this is the standard deviation of the sample, and this, they actually calculated it. This will not always be here. They did the 2.193 divided by the square root of 20, so that's what that is. Uh, right here, it tells you your confidence interval. Uh, this is your T value. And then that right there is our P value. So from this printout, it gives us all the information we need to know. Uh, we would see that the p-value is a 0 0.31, so that is a large p-value, so we would fail to reject. There's not evidence that this plate weight is not 25. Um, we could interpret the confidence interval right here. We're 95% confident that the, the average plate weight is between 24.484 and 26.536. Okay, so this one gives a lot of different information. All right, let's go look at the second one. The second one um, has a lot more stuff and a lot of it we're not going to have to use. So let's start here. So this is telling you that we're looking at something about weight. Okay. Um, it gives us the number of objects, so that's the N. Uh, it gives us a lot of other stuff and so you kind of have to depending on what you're looking for you see these these five things these are the different things that you're looking for okay and so if you wanted the dummy condition it would have a p-value of 0.027 and it would have this confidence interval if you're looking for CP page it would have a p-value of 0.908 in this confidence interval. So you see, these are the different options of what you're looking for. Um, and then these are the p-values. And then these are the confidence intervals. Um, your degrees of freedom, um, because it looks like it is just each one is run on one sample, would be 380 and look here you can also see that right there degrees of freedom is 380 uh, these right here I'm pretty sure those are the means usually we wouldn't have to deal with um, this part of it usually what we're just focusing on is the T value the P value and the confidence interval so this one is definitely a little bit more tricky um, but you should be able to pull out the things that you need to be able to run hypothesis test. Okay, so the last one is another basic one and this one's an easier one to read compared to that last one. That last one was a little tricky. Um, and so it is a two sample test. And so it gives you, um, they're comparing the cost of something about dogs and something about cats. And it says the mean for dogs is 501. The mean for cats is 443. And then the standard deviation for each, and again, 
They found this by doing the standard deviation divided by square root of n. And they're doing dog minus cat. So their hoe would be the mean of the dog minus the mean of cat is equal to zero. And it says not equal right here. You see that? So that means their ha is the dog minus the cat is not equal to zero. Um, when you actually subtract the two, they get 57.95. Here's the confidence interval. Um, here's the t-value, which is, it's almost eight tick marks away, so we know that that's super small. Here's the p-value. Um, it probably is something like 0 0.000025 or something really small like that. Um, but this is only writing three numbers after the decimal. So that's why it just shows up per zero. Here's the degrees of freedom, because remember degrees of freedom need to be calculated um, through the calculator. So they did that for you. So with a small p-value, if we were going to write a statement, we would say with a small p-value of zero, we would reject the null. There is strong evidence that the cost of dogs and cost of cats is not the same, is not equal. Um, this confidence interval, so because they did dogs first, that's saying that dogs cost between 42.74 and 73.17 more, uh, maybe per month, per year, we don't know. So we're 95% confident that dogs cost an average of 42.74 to 73.17 more than cats. And we don't know, I'm, I'm assuming it's per year. I would hate to see somebody spend that much money on a dog or cat um, in a month. So, and that might even be vet bills. It might not be, or it could be pet food. We really don't know. So when you have a computer printout, the things that you want to be able to find is you want to be able to find the p-value. So let's make a list. Need to find, you need to be able to find uh, the degrees of freedom. Oh, we should probably do a lowercase like it says. So degrees of freedom, you need to be able to find a p-value. Um, Sometimes you need to be able to find a confidence interval. Most of them have the confidence interval. But out of those two things, those are the two that you need to be able to find the most. Um, the other thing is you should be able to learn how to write the ho and the ha based off the confident, off the printout. We could do it on the first and second, or the first and third. The second one, it didn't really give us enough information to say if we could find the confidence interval. Or not the, not the confidence interval, but we couldn't find the ho and the ha. Uh, that's it.